Hi everyone, my name is Goke and welcome to this video. Um, I'd like to share on the topic understanding the nature of the help of the Holy Spirit. This is a continuation of the video that I made last week and I pray that you'll be blessed as you listen to this in Jesus name. So if you didn't watch my last video, I encourage you to do so, but I'd like to continue from where I left off. So understanding the nature of the help of the Holy Spirit. I said that God's purposes sometimes are interwoven in our lives and such that we need the guidance from above if we are to fulfill what God has designed for us to do. From the day that we were born, we're entering into seasons after seasons, physically, spiritually as well. And at every juncture of our life, I believe we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit to help us as we navigate our way in destiny. You know, Jesus said concerning him in John 14, 16, he said, And I would ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, another helper, I beg your pardon. Uh, and you know, it is translated, um, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, to be with us forever. To be with us forever. In Luke 24, 49, it says, listen carefully, I am sending the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit upon you, but remain in the city of Jerusalem until... So I want to carry on from where I left off. The Holy Ghost, he commands, the Holy Ghost commands... He commands us to take actions expecting or with the expectation of full obedience. He commands us to take actions with the expectation of full obedience. In the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 19 to 20, it says, While Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them doubting nothing for i have sent them so uh, in this portion of the scripture peter um, apostle peter he had an interesting encounter he fell into a trance he saw a, a, in pictorial form the plan of salvation um to the gentiles and the bible says that while he thought about this vision the holy ghost said to him go down um arise go down um, three men are seeking you. Go down with them, follow them, do not question, for I have sent them. So it, it, that was a direct commandment from the Lord or command from the Holy Spirit expecting Peter's full obedience, expecting Peter's full obedience. Another scripture which maybe you may consider is in Acts chapter 13 verse 2. Acts chapter 13 verse 2, it says that, as the minister to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. It says, Separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So this is basically a direct instruction. I will say a command. Separate um, Barnabas and separate Paul unto me for the work to which I have called them. And if you read the book of Acts, you see how the life of um, Paul and Barnabas went about how they, you know, went places carrying the gospel into unreached areas. So these um, are just examples of direct commands from the Holy Spirit instructing us to do certain things and commanding obedience. So the Holy Ghost can command. The Holy Ghost can command. And I want to say this, you know, Jesus said concerning him, he said that he will not speak of his own accord of his own initiative whatever he hears that would he speak in other words his commands are actually the commands of the lord to us so when the holy spirit speaks to us in such manner is actually a command from jesus instructing us to do certain things and he expects our full obedience so he commands he commands so that was number five number six he teaches he teaches he teaches us all things he teaches us all things you see, this is when he teaches us to learn something. You know, the Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 26, it says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, 
in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. Apologies, I'm reading the Amplified Translation. It says, He will teach you all things. He will teach you all things. So the Holy Spirit teaches us all things. He teaches us all things. He would give us the grace to understand um, is or cause, cause us to understand a certain matter. You know, one prayer that I love praying about on myself um, is in uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 11, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, talking about um, the Spirit of the Lord resting upon Jesus. It says, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. But it says here that the spirit of wisdom and understanding. In other words, there is a spirit of understanding. Or you could say it this way. There is a spirit that calls you to understand. And I believe that spirit is the Holy Spirit. It says that he will teach you all things. You know, think about this. What is the goal of a teacher? The goal of a teacher is to help their student to understand a certain matter better than even themselves. So the Holy Ghost will teach us all things he will teach us all things he will give us the grace to understand um a matter hallelujah so he teaches he teaches and, and you know i have several um examples that i could give along the lines but along these lines but i don't want to um make this a a a testimony video but the holy ghost teaches the holy ghost teaches he teaches um number seven the Holy Ghost, he reveals, he reveals, he reveals. He takes of Jesus and reveals to us. He takes of Jesus and reveals to us. You know, someone said it this way. He says that the Holy Ghost is the administrator of wisdom and revelation. And I love that. He administers it. And, you know, how do I know? How do I know? Because I've come to accept it. How do I know? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. It says, just as it is written in the scriptures, things that eyes has not seen, things that ears has not heard, um, and which have not entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. And verse 10, it says that God has revealed them to us by the Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God or the depths of God. So the Holy Ghost searches the depths of God to reveal these things to us. So he reveals, even Jesus said concerning him, um, he said concerning him that he would take of his, like in whatever he gets from Jesus, that's what he's going to reveal to us. He reveals mysteries to us. In Deuteronomy, I believe, chapter 29, verse 29. Um, it says that the secret things belong to the Lord, but the things that are revealed to us belong to us and our children forever. So there are some things that ought to be revealed to us. There are some things that ought to be revealed to us. And the the way that is done in the kingdom is through the help of the Holy Spirit. You know, there's a certain prayer which, um, you know, I, I would encourage you to add to your um, prayer list. For it's in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. So the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints and the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power so paul was saying he says that praying for the Ephesian church he says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. And what that does is that we begin to um, um, get more understanding in the things of the spirit. You know, the things of the flesh becomes clear to us. And at the same time, the spirit of the spirit becomes progressively clearer to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'll just read it to us again. Verse 9 says, Just as it is written, the things that eyes has not seen, the things that ears has not heard, the things which has not entered into the heart of man, 
um, are the things God has prepared for those who love him. And verse 10, it says, God has unveiled them, has revealed them to us through the Holy Spirit. And for that spirit searches all things diligently, even the profound depths of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit, he reveals, he reveals, he reveals. Number eight, the Holy Spirit, he reminds, he reminds, he helps us to remember everything that Jesus has told us. Um, in that same John 14, 29, he says, But the Helper, he will teach you all things, and he will help you remember everything that I have told you. Jesus was speaking in this place. He says, he will help you remember. He would help you remember. You know, it's a very good place to say, you know, to yourself that God will help me remember everything that Jesus has told me. Um, and uh, I'll give I'll give you know a simple example. I I, I love um, reading my Bible, and you know so many times I you know read for different reasons. You know, read to understand. You know, read just to fill my heart with the word. You know, read for so many reasons. Um, but there's so many things that I you know I read or have read in the past that. Um, when I need it, it's as if the Holy Spirit does a surgical work and, you know, just bring things from, you know, the depths of me, you know, into the forefront of my thinking. Let's say, for example, I was facing a particular issue and, and you know, I, I, you know, I'm looking for words or looking for the right thing to do um, in that particular matter. And all of a sudden, you know, something just like comes from the inside and then comes to the forefront, a scripture, it could be a song, you know, it could be a phrase, it could be um, him reminding me of a certain dream or a certain encounter that I had, which is relevant for that particular situation. And this is how the Holy Ghost does his work. He he reminds us, he helps us to remember. You know, I can tell you that there's so many things packed on the inside of you. When I mean packed, you know, P-A-R-K. In other words, you just pack somewhere like a car. Now packed on the inside of you that are reserved for future times. Because we go through life where, you know, we face situation and it is the word of God that helps us to, um, to, to wage war effectively and get the victory. So the Holy Ghost, he reminds us of the things Jesus has told us. Um, and I, and I, you know, and I love this so much. I've heard so many testimonies about this, about, you know, the Holy Ghost helping people um, in their exams, the Holy Ghost helping people um, maybe as they you know, do their circular work, the Holy Ghost helping people maybe as a minister um, to other people. I've heard so many testimonies. I have personal testimonies of myself. Um, about you know the ministry of the Holy Ghost helping helping me to remember things helping me to remember things I've heard from Jesus things I've you know heard from maybe other people sharing what to me even prophecies that has come my way the Holy Ghost helped me remember that this is the fulfillment of that word in which I gave you that day this is the fulfillment of it and in such a way it looks as if you are living in deja vu like you've seen this before um but um, you can't really pinpoint where but now you're experiencing the same thing hallelujah the holy ghost he helps us he reminds us he reminds us he reminds us number nine he testifies or bears witness to the truth he testifies or bear witness to the truth you know, the truth that we are talking about is Jesus. Is Jesus. So he testifies, he bears witness to the truth. You know, he bears witness to the things pertaining to Jesus. He bears witness to the things pertaining to the kingdom, to the purposes of God, to the will of God. The Holy Ghost is there to bear witness, to bear witness. You know, um, truth is meant to be revealed. But at the same time, you know, truth is meant to be witnessed to. So there is always a witness to truth. And that, that's one of the functions of the Holy Ghost. He bears witness to the truth. He bears witness to the truth. You know, in Acts chapter 10, 
verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. 38. It says, And how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. It says, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, and he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And why was God there? God was just testifying to the truth that he was declaring. God was testifying to um, the truth coming through the mouth of Jesus, through the life of Jesus. And he was attesting to that by signs, by wonders, and by miracles. By signs, by wonders, by miracles. I'll read to you in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 2. He says, If the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we so neglect a great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. So the scripture says here that, you know, the truth that was spoken through angels, it proved steadfast. And it says that Jesus came to declare a great salvation. You know, he was first you know declared by Jesus, but many other witnesses carried the same thing. And it says, God bearing, God bore witness. He bore witness, both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, you know, participates in, in bearing witness to the truth. And what is the truth? It's this message of the gospel, this message of the great salvation revealed unto humanity. So the Holy Spirit, he testifies and he bears witness to, to the truth. He bears witness to the truth. Number 10, the Holy Spirit, he convicts. He convicts. He convicts. In John chapter 16, verse 8 to 10. John chapter 16, verse 8 to 10. It says, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment he will convict the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment so the holy spirit he convicts of sin you know notice he he doesn't condemn but he convicts of sin he convicts of sin you know because god doesn't want anyone to go to hell and if you're living in sin he brings conviction to you so that you might come um you know to the cross and receive forgiveness and get right with god and get right with god and that works both in the life of the believer and also to both in the life of the unbeliever you know in the life of the believer you know the holy ghost convicts us you know in an active way um you know when we do something wrong you know we obviously we we have our conscience inside of us bearing witness that we've done something wrong but also the Holy Spirit, he convicts us of, of, of that sin so that we can come to the place of repentance and then receive forgiveness and get back with God. But at the same time, the Holy Spirit also works in the life of the unbeliever. The Bible says that no one can come to God except he draws him. So, you know, there is, there is, there is a ministry uh, of the Spirit which he goes about drawing people, wooing them into the kingdom. And... You know, I can say that that's how, you know, I got saved. And that's how, if you're a believer, that's how you got saved. Because it wasn't by our own initiative. It wasn't by our own initiative. It wasn't as if we said, oh, yes, you know, I'm done with this life of sin. And now is the time to, to live for Jesus. No, you know, he was the one who was pulling on the string of our hearts. And then we came to a place where we realized that, yes, we needed something greater than ourselves that we needed jesus and then we received him and, and then we became a new creature or we become a new creature so the holy spirit he convicts he convicts of sin your time will not permit me um but there's so many things that you know i like to share um in addition to you know what i've said earlier he tells us of things to come 
um, in John 16, 13 to 14, it says, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own initiative, but whatever he hears, um, he would speak, he would disclose to you, and he would tell you what is to come in the future. He would tell you what is to come in the future. So the Holy Spirit, he reveals things to us that is to come in the future. And this is really important that we are sensitive to um, this particular uh, um, um, ministry um, in our life that the Holy Spirit gives us warning about what is to come in the future so that we can prepare or position ourselves uh, maybe to prevent something from happening or to cause something to happen. So he gives us warnings about the future gives us warnings about the future. He tells of things, he tells of things to come. Remember, he doesn't speak of his own initiative. It's whatever he hears that he will speak. So, you know, whatever you are receiving about the things to come, it is actually from the Lord. It's actually from the Lord. And I want to maybe just um, add one more into this, which goes along the same lines, that the Holy Spirit also, he warns, he wants he provides warnings to us he provides warning to us about um it could be about things to come it could be about maybe people it could be about you know anything he just gives us like warnings that uh, to 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 maybe cause us to take some preventive actions or, or to cause us to um go in a certain direction instead of maybe the direction that we want to go you know he warns us because maybe the you know the holy spirit also he knows the end from the beginning so when warnings comes like that is because maybe we can't handle the consequences he doesn't want us to follow along that path in which ha which uh, maybe has a, a a consequence that is not um, good to us so he warns us of things to come and one example that i can give in acts 20 verse 23 it says, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. So the Holy Spirit, if you maybe check the meaning of the word testify, it means that the Holy Spirit was providing warnings to Paul that this is what is going to happen. So be prepared. It says, the Holy Spirit testifies in every city that chains and tribulations await me. And that gave Paul the encouragement that he needed to go to Jerusalem because he wasn't afraid of the persecution that was coming. He wasn't afraid that he was going to be arrested or maybe treated harshly for the sake of, of the gospel. Um, he, he, he wasn't afraid of all of that because he had a word. And that word was the Holy Ghost has said to him that this is what is going to happen. And he had prepared his mind. He said that, you know, I'm ready to die for the sake of this gospel. So the Holy Ghost, he provides warnings to us. Um, and finally, what I just want to leave you with um, today is that he empowers. He empowers. He empowers. And, you know, if you read Acts 1.8, the Bible says that, and you shall receive power after or when the holy ghost has come upon you and then you will be witnesses to me in jerusalem in judea in samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth the holy spirit he empowers he empowers us to do what god has called us to do he empowers us to be an effective witness of christ he empowers us to be able to you know share the gospel in a life-giving way, in a life-giving way, He empowers us. You know, so many things that I can also add. You know, the Holy Spirit He glorifies Jesus. You know, He helps us to live above the dictates of the flesh. Um, so, so many things. But uh, I, I'd just like to um, leave you with this, with this final word. That sometimes, you know, we have, um, you know, we're stuck in life or we're stuck at a junction. You know, seeking the help of God. And in my, you know, we have questions in our hearts in which, you know, we have, why is this thing not working? Why is this why like that? And when you dig deeper, it may be that you're not asking the right question. You know, there's a common prayer which we used to pray in, in the book of Second Corinthians chapter 13. 
um, I think the last verse, it says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So this helper, our helper, we are supposed to fellowship with him. And in fellowshipping with him, we need to understand um, the nature of the help that he brings to us, that he brings to us. So, you know, primarily he's there to lead and guide us. He's there to lead and guide us. You know, he's there we follow. He manifests Jesus unto us. But there are so many other things that he does for us. He does on our behalf. He does for our sake. He does even for us without us asking him. And as we yield, as we lean into this, we see that, you know, our life stays in the center of God's will. Hallelujah. I, I, I hope this has blessed you. Um, please, you know, feel free to share this, you know, uh, with, with your friends or those who um, you think um, might um, be open to listening to this. Um, I, I also like to say um, this, maybe you may be listening to me and maybe you don't know Jesus or maybe um, your relationship with God um you know has gone down the drain you know i just like to you know invite you to maybe just offer your life to him if you want to do that just say this prayer after me lord jesus um i am a sinner i realize that i need help and i realize that i need you and i ask that you forgive all my sins all of them wash me clean with your blood come into my life right now from this day on i am a new creature in you and from this day on i live a transformed and a changed life my life will never remain the same again with you by my side in jesus name amen thank you very much and i'll see you in the next video